Hello everyone, it's Tracking Pat, and today's video is going to be the third part of the Track 2 Op series. And what we're mainly going to talk about here is using an indexer with the 2 Op. Uh, as I explained in an earlier video, uh, the third option is to have a plate that actually holds the indexer. We use the Hardinge indexer for two really good reasons. Number one, it's easy to program. And number two, it's pretty small in stature, so it gives us most of the work envelope to still have for our own use. Okay. Um, when you uh, look at the other videos that I did before this, I talked about saving a temporary file. And in this case, I've got my temp file in here, so I'm just going to open it. So you'll notice right here it says open temp. And with a temporary file, as I explained before, everything in the program is ready to run with that. Okay. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how the programming is different first, and then we'll get into the indexer. So if you look here on my screen, if I hit the mode screen and I go to the program mode, at the very beginning on the first page, you'll see that it has a program name. It tells me my dimensions from the home position to the to part zero. And then it also says under here where it says indexer prompt, it says yes. So what that's telling is yes, I do want to use an indexer in this case. And if I push go to begin right here, you're going to see that my first milling event has all my information in here. So this thing, just like I showed you in the other videos, works like so. At the end of each event, there's a place down at the bottom that says indexer begin and indexer end. So if I put a three in either one of those, I'm saying send a pulse to the indexer. So I can have it happen at the beginning of an event or beginning of a series of events. I can also have it at the end of an event or an end of a series of events. In my case, if I go all the way to the fifth event, which is a repeat here, you'll notice that in here it tells me to uh, automatically send that note and rotate. So what it's going to do is it's going to mill a little bit, it's going to rotate, and I'm cutting six sides on a round part. Then I'm going to change tools, I'm going to come in and I'm going to drill on every other flat, and then come back, drill through, and tap. Okay, so now that you have a little idea how this works, I'm going to show you how the indexer works. So first of all, I'm going to introduce my assistant here. His name is also Patrick, and he is going to show us that over on the hard inch control, the first thing you would do is just turn it on. Once it boots up, the screen will come to a welcome screen, and it's going to ask to uh, get started. You would just push the green cycle start button. And then if you read that screen, you're going to see that it says it has not been homed yet. So just like the CNC machine, just like the 2-op, it has to be homed. So if you push the return zero button on there, you will see that it actually homes. So I'm going to open the door here. And as you can see, the part is turning in there and reading the encoder to know where it's at. So once we get to this point, you'll notice in there that it's ready, it's on event one, and then here all I've got to do is hit the mode key and go to the run mode and push start. Okay, so I can use the tracking mode in here just like I can with anything else and it'll coincide with the indexer. So here's what's going to happen. It's going to run through the process, and when it sees that event three in there, it's going to stop, send a signal to the indexer. The indexer is going to rotate as many degrees as I put in the program, and when it's finished, it's going to send a note back and basically push the go button on the, on the track two up until it's moved. Okay, and they'll just handshake back and forth through the whole process. Okay, so here we go. So you can see there's a slight pause in between each section where it has to index. And if I let it go all the way through this process, you'll see it get out of the way, change tools, and then continue on. But at this point, I think you get a pretty good idea on how it works. So I'm just going to push stop right there and explain a little bit more. So think about this process as I explained before about the fact that this machine is portable, right? And so in the case where you've got a part that's coming off of a turning center or coming off a lathe and it needs some work done on the side and you're not using live tooling or live tooling doesn't make sense because of the quantities, here I set down the two op next to the lathe and I'm just going to bring the parts out, stick it in the lathe, push go, and when that part's done, bring it over here and set it in the two op, push go on that one and go back to my lathe, right? So let's say that the part that's coming out of the lathe is taking 20 minutes and this part's going to take another five. I'm using free labor 
from the operator who's standing there waiting for the lathe to do the whole secondary operation, okay? And uh, if you're like most people at this point, you're gonna say, hey, but Pat, I'm never gonna move this thing. And uh, I'm hoping you're gonna rethink that idea because the whole idea of it being portable allows you to build a cell right around the operator and do what I need to do, okay? And so uh, worst case scenario, what's gonna happen is you're gonna move it back and forth a few times, find out it works good on that end of the shop, works great on that end of the shop, and then you're gonna call up your rep and say, hey, I need another one of these things because this thing's making me a lot of money. And that's exactly what we're really trying to do here, right? We're trying to be competitive. We're trying to offer you guys a product that's gonna help you be competitive. We believe the two-op is definitely good for that stuff. So we hope you look a little farther into this and get a better idea on how all this stuff will work for you. Again, talk to your local rep, look us up on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and uh, don't forget trackmt.com. Again, I'm tracking Pat. And remember to keep on tracking.